Oh, well, hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for Monday, November 4th, 2024. This is time, the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Dan, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. You might ask, what is CircuitPython? It's a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord, and you'll find an invite link there. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the at sign circuit Python Easter's Discord role. There's a shared notes document. Right now it's a Google Doc that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to this document beforehand. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post the link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. I'll explain each part when we get to it. So now we'll start with uh, community news, and I'll take a timestamp. Um, these news items that I'm about to read are available in our weekly Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which goes out via email on Monday mornings. Um, I'll explain more about that at the end of community news. So the first item is that uh, CircuitPython 9.2.0 final was released last week just before this meeting. Um, it's the latest minor revision of CircuitPython, and it's a new stable release. There's a link in the notes document to the blog entry for that, uh, pointing to the release notes. Um, notable changes in this release from 9.1.x uh, are Raspberry Pi RP2350 support. Uh, we've updated on Espressif to ESP IDF version 5.3.1, which includes a new I2C driver, which fixes a bunch of I2C problems we've been seeing on ESP32 S3. It merges updates for MicroPython uh, from version 122.2 and version 1.23. Uh, there are in improvements to the Espressive BLE implementation. There's a new function in math, the math module, dist. There are updates to the underscore eve module. Uh, for I2C probing, there are new uh, I2C probe uh, methods um, available in BusIO and BangIO, and they are used to check for single de device address. So you can say, like, is there a device that's in such an address? Uh, STIO IO has been implemented on ESP32 S3, and there are new uh, modules, audio delay and audio filters. Uh, these modules are experimental, and the API they present may change, but they're very neat. Now we'll move on to the next item. Uh, MicroPython version 1.24.0 released was released. The new MicroPython version 1.24.0 adds support for the new Raspberry Pi RP2350 MCU, improves RISC-V support with native code generation, supports ESP32 C6 microcontrollers, updates the Zephyr version with threading support, adds unified tiny USB bindings across ports, adds a portable UART uh, IRQ API, and has an enhanced remote MP remote recursive copy. 
There are also numerous bug fixes, enhancements to the test suite, and more attention to the testing of the machine module and its API. For more details, there are many more things that have been added than I mentioned here. See the release notes uh, link, which is in the notes document. Uh, next item. Um, Arduino brings its MicroPython editor to the cloud with a browser-based web app release. The web appears to be a popular place to edit MicroPython and CircuitPython apps, with the latest entry being from the Arduino team. At the moment, the editor is still in the, quote, lab phase with bug fixes and improvements planned. A web serial browser is required, and uh, there's a link to, for more information in the notes document. Uh, interestingly, uh, it turns out there's now a, an extension for Fire, Firefox to add web serial. It requires you run a helper program while um, Firefox is running that I basically acts as a web. You talk it over a web over a web socket, and then it talks to the USB devices, which is kind of interesting. And now, uh, yet another item. Um, a roundup of CircuitPython website upgrades. The main CircuitPython website, circuitpython.org, has undergone several fixes and enhancements. And there's a blog post about that you can read about in the notes document. I will make a link here. And uh, most notably, um, there's some uh, minor bug fixes. Uh, the major features of these, each board are made more visible. Mm -hmm. There's a castellated pad filter, so that you can filter reports that only include castellated pads. The manufacturer's list, which was getting really long, is now scrollable, so it's easier to deal with. Uh, you have two files, which are the most common files to download, are now listed first uh, when there's also a bin file. And uh, there are how to install links uh, added to many boards, um, so with detailed uh, install instructions, which often point off to uh, either manufacturer instructions or the appropriate Adafruit learn guide. Next up uh, is another web-based um, accessory, Web Serial Terminal, which is a terminal emulator for web browsers. Um, the author, um, uh, Vavrin, uh, Peter Vavrin, uh, has worked on this. He just started to work on it. Take a look at it. There are also links in the web document for this. There are several of these now. This is a nice one. I've tried it. Um, see what you think. And uh, finally, let's talk about where all these items came from. Um, the Python on microcontroller, these uh, news items and more are available in our weekly Python for microcontrollers newsletter. This goes out via email on Monday mornings. You can visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter and look at the archives. Thanks to Ant for putting the newsletter together. If you have anything you'd like to share, any Python and hardware projects or other content, please consider contributing uh, links to that content in the newsletter. You can open a peer on GitHub in the Adafruit Circuit Python Weekly Newsletter repo. You can tag at sign engine engineer or hashtag uh, Circuit Python on Mastodon or X, or you can email cpnews at adafruit.com with an explanation and a link of what you'd like to contribute. Any of those are absolutely fine. So let us know. There was a lot of material in the newsletter. And um, it's, I always, when I, I uh, look at it for, um, for editing reasons once a week, and there are always a bunch of links that I want to look at immediately. All right. So the next major section is the state of CircuitPython the libraries, and Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire CircuitPython project. So this section gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall and then separately discuss the core the libraries and Blinka. So overall, in the past week, we've had 16 pull requests merged by 13 authors. Some new authors that I don't recognize include Shubham 0x13, it's F. David, and The Illusionist 77. Um, there were five reviewers of those PRs. There were 11 closed issues by eight people and 12 opened by 11 people. And we, um, we had marked 
the, the entire repo as Hacktoberfest. So that's since October is over now, those labels are now removed. And next up is the core uh, section. And uh, Jeff has kind of agreed to read that section. Hello. Oh. So the core is the part of CircuitPython coded in the C language that you uh, load on your device first before loading any Python code. And in the core, we had six pull requests merged from five authors and three reviewers. Um, so I want to especially call out ADCC, David uh, Glode, and Bablock B as uh, non Adafruit folks who are contributing. Um, uh, we are at 27 pull requests, so it would be good to get a couple of those cleared off so that we keep under the 25 that fit on one screen. Issues wise, we saw four closed issues by six people. No, sorry. Four closed issues by two people, while six issues were opened by five people, so we're up slightly. Uh, that leaves us 750 open issues. We organized the work that um, Adafruit is funding folks to work on with milestones. And here are a couple of those. For 9.2x, we have two open issues, which represent bugs we'd like to solve sooner rather than later. For 9xx, we have 45 open issues. And waiting for the time we can make incompatible changes in CircuitPython, we have 13 open issues on the 10.0.0 milestone. There are a couple of other milestones, including uh, long term. And uh, like I mentioned before, this is um, used to prioritize Adafruit funded work. If you're interested in picking up something in the long term section, that's a great way to dip your toes into programming the C core of CircuitPython. And um, we've got a lot of issues there. So uh, that wraps it up for the core. Back to you, Dan. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll go on to the library section. Um, and Tim, for me, Guy, could you read that section? Yeah, thanks, Dan. Uh, this section covers all of the CircuitPython libraries, uh, which tend to be either driver libraries that help you interface with a specific piece of hardware, or helper libraries that allow you to uh, work on your project at a bit of a higher level without worrying about as many of the details uh, involved in some of these more complex things. Um, all these libraries can be found on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library that it is. Um, Across those libraries this week, we had 10 pull requests merged by eight different authors. Uh, the names that are um, newer or less familiar, less frequent uh, to my eye at least, so these folks might be newer contributors or just less frequent, uh, or may just be someone whose uh, name I don't happen to recognize uh, as much. Um, but those names for the libraries this week, uh, Shub, Ham, uh, 0x13, Mikey Skylar, um, uh, Sklar, I should say, excuse me, uh, and then let's see, it's F. David, uh, D. Cooper Dalyrimple, and The Illusionist 77. Uh, so again, thanks to those folks who might be newer or less frequent contributors to the libraries. Um, thanks to everybody else as well. We did have uh, four reviewers this week. Thanks to Dan, Lady Ada, Liz, and myself. Uh, and then in terms of the pull requests that were merged, uh, we were still mostly on the newer side of things this week. The oldest one was 30 days, uh, so getting up there, but not quite too old just yet. And the uh, newest ones were down at one day. Um, that leaves us at the end of the week with 43 open pull requests across all those libraries. The oldest one is a draft that's 809 days uh, at this point. The newest one is one day old. Um, in terms of issues, we had seven closed issues by seven people with five new issues opened up by five people. Um, it says it removed Hacktoberfest from 113 issues, but yeah, as Dan mentioned, uh, we're out of October at this point, and those are applied at the at the repo level. Um, I'm not sure what exactly that measured, or maybe it removed them from the repo, but there's more than that number of repos. Anyway, Hacktoberfest uh, is wrapped up. Um, we have uh, 888 open issues remaining at the end of the week, uh, and there are 96 of those uh, open issues that are labeled as good first issues, which you can find listed over at circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is the website where you should head if you are interested in getting involved with the CircuitPython project um, on the uh, coding and reviewing of libraries uh, side of things. So on that page, again, that's circuitpython.org slash contributing, you'll find a list of open PRs and open issues. Um, if uh, you're just getting started, what we tend to point folks for, towards first is the list of open PRs. Find something in that list that you have either got some interest in or you've got the hardware and you feel like you are able to test out whatever the, the PR is actually changing. 
you can go ahead and try out the code, uh, look it over for spelling and syntax and logic. Um, if you do have the hardware, test it out. And then uh, once you've done those, uh, that, you can leave a comment on GitHub letting us know, um, you know what you did, letting us know what you, uh, that you looked it over, what you found. Uh, if you did have the hardware, let us know how it went when you tried to run it. Um, if you get comfortable with that process and you want to level up to leave official reviews on GitHub, we can work with you to make that happen. Uh, and then if you would like to start getting your hands dirty with some actual code, you can also click over to the list of issues on that contributing page on CircuitPython.org uh, website where you'll find a similar list of uh, links over to GitHub, but these ones represent issues rather than pull requests. Uh, and so again, if you're getting started, you can kind of go through there, find something that's either interesting to you uh, in a library that you have an interest in, or um, you know, if there's one that you've got the hardware for and you feel like you'd be able to, to test it out uh, and create the fix or new feature or whatever it is, um, then you can click through to GitHub, figure out what that issue is about and actually submit your own pull request with the change that's being uh, requested there in the issue. We do have guides for contributing to CircuitPython in the libraries using Git and GitHub. Um, so we can point you to the learn guide system if you need some help getting the version control stuff set up. Um, we also have folks who are around throughout the week on Discord who are more than happy to help you with that kind of stuff as well. So if you want, you to, if you want to contribute, but you feel like you're having some trouble uh, with Git or the version control or uh, you know, pre-commit or any of the tools we use, uh, please feel free to come say hi on the Discord. Let us know uh, what you're trying to do and what you're having trouble with and um, there will be folks there who are willing to help out. We want everyone to be able to contribute to the libraries, uh, no matter your background or prior skill set or uh, anything like that. Um, in terms of the library uh, PyPI weekly download stats, uh, we are looking at uh, 1.3 million uh, downloads this week on PyPI, so we are still a bit elevated. Um, I think there's a note to discuss those numbers a bit more in depth later on in the weeds. Um, there is a top 10 list if you're interested in those here. And then uh, new and updated libraries this week, the VCN, uh, yeah, VCNL uh, 420 or 4200, I should say. Um, driver library was added and the template engine uh, library was updated as well this week. Uh, and that's what we've got for libraries. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Tim. Okay. And then uh, the final section in this uh, subsection in this section is the Blinka section. Um, take a timestamp here. And um, Blinka is our compatibility later for CircuitPython on single board computers like Raspberry Pi. So Blinka lets you run CircuitPython code under regular Python, which is known as C Python. So that's really confusing. But the C in that case stands for the language C, not circuit. So, uh, but it lets you run CircuitPython code on, say, a Raspberry Pi or some other uh, single board computer that has pins on it. So in the past week, um, there were zero pull requests merged by nobody. Um, there are five open pull requests, which have been open for a while. Uh, no issues were closed. One new issue was opened. Um, there are now 112 open issues. There were 63,459 PyPy downloads, but I will talk about that number in, in the weeds. Um, and the number of supported boards is 146 right now. Okay. Now, now we'll move on to the next major section, which is um, Hug Reports. Uh, what's Hug Reports? It's a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start and then we'll get on the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or missing the meeting, I'll read your notes when I get to them in the list. So to start with, I'd like Thank you, Mikey Sklar, who's um, an Adafruit. Um, it works at primarily in the Adafruit support forums, but uh, he was he found a he, there were a number of problems reported with the web serial ESP tool, which lets you update um, things to over over a serial port to uh, expressive boards, and it was not working on boards where there's you have to in, load a pass through program on a separate processor and then there's uh, what's usually called an airlift processor an esp32 that's on the same board so an example of that is pi portal or the matrix portal m4 so it's had, those things had stopped working with web serial esp tool so mikey diagnosed that it was due to a software update update underneath the covers um and 
we he added a feature to the web serial ESP tool so that you now can toggle a certain thing that prevents a reset from happening, which is what the new thing that was started to happen and uh, was breaking things. So you can now turn that off and we'll update the guides to note that. Uh, thanks to Tim for continued improvements to circuitpython.org, which I already discussed in the news section. Thanks to Jeff for a quick uh, fix for uh, non JSONable, for, uh, for raising errors about non JSONable types, and also some other recent fixes. Thanks to um, Bablock B for fixing RP2350 CPU.temperature. Thanks to ADCC. For bringing the CYW43 driver up to date, um, um, because there have been some changes and we hadn't updated it. And thanks to Bill ADAT for finding an RP23 cache bug in 9.2.0, which should be fixed in 9.2.1. And next up is uh, Foamy Guy. Tim. Right, Dan. Uh, for me this week, thanks to uh, Anne for showing me the ropes on the blog uh, authoring system. And uh, thanks to Liz for working with me on the VCNL 4200 driver and wrangling some of the trickier bits of uh, working on that. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Next up is Jeff. Hello. Um, so I have a hug for a Cooper doll Rimple for some useful contributions and thoughtful interactions, mostly on GitHub, and one for Kevin J. Walters for reporting some SynthIO issues and paper cuts. All right, thanks. Okay, next up is status updates. Um, this is our time to let people say what to tell people to be able to tell people what we're doing individually. So I'll I'll go through the list alphabetically, uh, starting with me. So it's not quite alphabetical. And then, um, and so just tell us about what you've been done since the last meeting and what you're planning to do until the next meeting. And uh, I'll just leave it at that for the moment. So in the past week, I fixed this RP2350 cache bug I mentioned, and I'm getting ready for a 921 release. That release is not urgent. There are only a few minor things that need to be fixed in it. Um, maybe a new board or two. So expect that in the not too distant future. And most of what I've been spending my time on uh, is studying um, the matter spec and some educational material about it and looking at the circuit matter um, code that Scott wrote. I've gotten the circuit matter code to work on Apple Home. I simulated an on off light bulb and was able to control it uh, from uh, my phone. So that's that was kind of fun, and I'm trying to get maybe working on some other uh, manufacturers' apps as well. But mainly, I'm the main thing I'll probably be looking at this month is trying to get Circuit Matter to run on Circuit Python. Right now, it's running on regular Python. Um, and next up is uh, Tim. All right, thanks, Dan. Right. Um, yeah. I tried out some uh, some styling tweaks for CircuitPython.org pages. Um, and got some feedback on those and settled on uh, switching up the, the new list of features, which was added last week, uh, to make those look more like the list of modules. Um, but uh, one of the things that we were trying to fix with the list of modules was there was a rendering an extra comma at the end of the list, and there were also some extra spaces um, before the commas. So I... Um, switched over the, the styling to match the modules, and then I dug into the liquid a templating system to figure out a way to fix the commas and the extra spaces um, and got that stuff submitted um, this week and then uh, the other sort of major thing i worked on for the last week or so was writing the content and filming videos uh, to use for gifts and the intro video for uh, my new guide which is about uh, c making custom led animations that work with the uh, aid for led animations library um, so that guide is submitted should be out soon um, and then uh, I looked at a couple library PRs over the weekend uh, to review those. There's uh, an improvement to the scrolling label to make it a bit more efficient. There was a refactor uh, as well as some fixes in template engine. Uh, and then on the fingerprint uh, driver library, there was a new kind of advanced example that runs on a Raspberry Pi and lets you submit multiple fingerprints to test against. 
Um, and then uh, the other thing I worked on, uh, which was on uh, Deep Dive, which reminds me I'll be on Deep Dive again this Friday if anyone wants to stop by, uh, was building the Unix port of CircuitPython and learning how to write the tests that run against it. Um, so that's what I have been up to. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Tim. And uh, next and last up is uh, Jeff. Go ahead. Hello. So my primary work right now is not in CircuitPython. It's in Arduino. I'm working on the floppy stuff, and in particular, I'm creating code to do FM flux encoding in Adafruit floppy so that it can emulate an 8-inch floppy drive for my old CPM machine. Um, in CircuitPython, I've got some small pull requests out. This morning, I was working to get the uh, pull request for block by quads to a mergeable state. At first, I noticed that I had failed to push a test that uh, runs during the build. And then once I pushed it, I learned that it was broken, so I've updated that again. I also reviewed some other pull requests. And as alluded to earlier, I learned there's a Firefox extension for web serial, which uh, previously had basically just been a, uh, a feature of Chrome and uh, web browsers that use the Chromium engine. And uh, But you install this program, and then the one program that I tried, the web serial terminal from the newsletter, works. Uh, as Dan mentioned, you do have to install a helper program on your system. Uh, it did seem to start out that helper program automatically when I needed it. And the last thing I've been doing is I've worked on reducing my overall number of open issues that I filed across GitHub. There's a link to get a list of all the issues you've ever filed that are still open. And I'm going through that and saying, like, I'm, I don't use that software. Nobody else ever seemed interested in it. Uh, no activity from the maintainers and just close that up because some of them are years old at this point. I'm currently at 149 open issues across all of GitHub, and I don't know what my goal is, but I'm hoping to close some more. And that's what I've been up to. OK, thanks, Jeff. OK, the last section is um, in the weeds. And uh, this is when we have a slightly more extended discussions on things, if any. So my item for this week is that we've noticed that the download counts for the libraries in Blinka have gotten very large. I don't know why they're larger than they used to be, but they are. Um, and it, it, it seems like there are, thousands of, there are thousands of downloads for various libraries every week from PyPy. I don't really think we have that many people who are downloading these libraries. And what I think is going on is that uh, when we run CircuitPython builds, the libraries that we need to run various build things and to import frozen modules and stuff seem to be uh, being installed. Maybe there's some, now we're doing some requirements.txt stuff that we weren't doing before, I'm not sure. But, you know, when we do a CircuitPython build, it builds a very large number of, uh, a very large number of builds that are, st are started, several thousand each time a PR is merged. And so I'm not sure how we get to a million that way, but it's still a lot. So um, if you look at the download counts for libraries that are not uh, important to the builds of certain Python, those numbers are much more reasonable. But there's really no way to distinguish. And I'm just thinking that these, these download counts, they were for bragging rights a long time ago, and now they're just like not very useful. <laughs> And we also don't use do download counts for things from circuitpython.org. Uh, there is uh, the library, the boards are sorted in um, download count order, but we don't publish the numbers because it's too easy to game. And also it may not be that meaningful. So I'm just wondering what you folks think about maybe the idea of just dropping the library and blink of download stats from the meeting. It would just, it would take less time and we'd have less uh, boilerplate in the, in the meeting notes. What do you, what do you think? I'm certainly comfortable dropping them. I think you're right that these aren't organic humans that are downloading requests 29,000 times in the last week. Um, and if the numbers aren't useful, then we should pay attention. We should not pay attention to them and we should not call attention to them. So I'm going to do it I'm, here. We should probably look at the newsletter too, because that's another um, 
use of time is to gather all those statistics and put it in there also. Yeah, so you can, it's, I think, I think how many libraries there are is pretty interesting and nice. The download stats are not, I don't say anything. Yeah. They're just, yeah. they're just, they're in, they're, they're specious. <laughs> right. Because they don't uh, humans. Yeah. I was going to add, I, I definitely agree. We could drop those. And then you, uh, you also kind of mentioned uh, my other thought there was it, the, the number of libraries, I think is a good stat. And I think there's even an issue now in, uh, in Adabot. But one thing I would love to see, it's kind of tangentially related to this is in the library section to update the report to show um, either the total number of all libraries, Adafruit and community, or, or list out the number of community libraries as well. That way we can see those uh, numbers. I think right now we have only the Adafruit ones, um, only the number for the Adafruit ones, and that's actually in the PyPy section as well. So maybe if we could bring that number up into the other section so that we retain um, that for the meeting, and I would love to add the community one um, to it as well okay. if we're tweaking up the, uh, the stats a bit. If you'd like to take that on for yeah. a PR, that'd be great. Yeah, I can do that. Whatever. Maybe, maybe it should be computed at a different point, right? I think you can get that information out of the bundle, too, so maybe it yep. shouldn't be pi pi. Yeah. Yep. All right, so maybe we'll do, we'll do that. It is not urgent, but we can get open some issues about this and, and fix them, and then have less stuff to read next time. Well, okay. But, and I, I have nothing else. Um, we can go ahead and wrap up. Next week's meeting is on Tuesday because there's a U.S. holiday on uh, Monday. So the next meeting will be on Tuesday, November 12th at uh, 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. U.S. Central Time.